Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Q3 kickoff OKR meeting, where we are going to tell you about all of the stuff that was awesome about Q2, some challenges about Q2, how we are structured um, going into Q3, and then what is most important, and each of the, the groups will, will present their own OKRs um, from a priority perspective. All right, so let me start by sharing my screen. Good place to start. Do, 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 do. Cool. I'm just going to keep it in this mode because easier for clicking sake. Um, but this is, this is our outline, accomplishments, challenges, structure, priorities. Um, starting first with Q2 accomplishments. This was a really big quarter for IPFS. Active, exciting. We saw a lot of growth, um, growth around the public network, growth of tons of cool apps building on top of IPFS, more end users getting to benefit from those apps, and more developers contributing to the project. We saw a lot of network growth. Um, this is unprecedented growth in the size of the network, and that was um, super awesome, super exciting, and also a challenge for us in keeping up with said network growth. Um, but it's exciting to see these many people joining the, the wider IPFS network. Um, we also saw a ton of apps proliferating. This is my very, very hacky attempt of taking this awesome document created by the block of projects using IPFS and trying to update it with my understanding of all of the cool people who we got to chat with at IPFS camp and other places who are either um, integrating with or building things on top of the IPFS network um, and getting to reach more users and getting to um, build some really cool stuff out there. So um, if someone wants to improve this and continue uh, integrating my very hacky edits into the actual document so that they are categorized, that'd be awesome. But um, as of right now, this is like more fleshed out than I've ever seen it before. And there's a ton of really cool stuff that only just got added this quarter. Um, so really, really cool there. We also saw contributors go up on GitHub. Um, some of this might be because there were so many people being pulled in for, for IPFS CAM. Um, but I think in general, kind of across the project, we're seeing um, kind of a, a, re, a re bump up in the number of quarterly contributors. Um, and, and hopefully we can continue maintaining that level of, of engagement and enthusiasm within the wider community to contribute directly to the project through IPFS. And finally, these people aren't all in one place at all. There are 4,000 community contributors around the world. Um, and that's kind of our, our full-time uh, contributor stack. And people have been participating in this and bringing tons of perspectives from, from all over. Um, so. Big thanks to our, our community for making all of this work that we do super possible. So wanted to, to look back a little bit further at Q1 and the important things that were, were happening in Q1. Um, there were some core releases of um, JS and IPFS. We launched ProtoSchool. And then there were a number of, um, of kind of releases um, of projects elsewhere in the ecosystem or iterative releases of, of things that were um, kind of important for, pe for people building on top of IPFS. And when you compare that to Q2, you notice that there was a, a marked increase in pace. I started running out of space in this graph. Um, and that all culminated with IPFS camp right at the end of, of June, bringing together all of the people who are working on core releases, which you notice we've got a lot of core releases in, in Q2. Um, but also all of the people who are working on um, kind of things like Matters News and um, Radical and other groups like that, um, building on top of, of IPFS to solve some pretty cool problems. So speaking of IPFS camp, IPFS camp was super awesome. And that's something we spent a lot of effort on this quarter. And I think it really, really paid off for us. Um, this was a phenomenal experience. There were 160 attendees, 22 countries, there was so much enthusiasm and excitement in, in this space. And the, the format, the things that we, we spent our time on were creating these awesome core and elective courses that everyone got to um, spend some time in each, each of the, the first two mornings of IPFS camp, um, getting to dive deep on actually how DAGs work, um, what really is the life cycle of data, and then building some cool stuff on top of it, um, which was super awesome. People. We also made this space for all of the people throughout the, the wider community to give lightning talks about how they've been using IPFS live in factories, um, how they've been using it to like replace DNS, 
um, how they've been using it to solve interesting, really cool problems around identity. So tons and tons and tons of amazing things. And I feel like I've been seeing threads where um, imminently we're able to make this stuff, uh, these videos available. So the, the production team's been working really hard to, to get all of that stuff out super, super fast. And finally, and this was, this was my favorite part, was our sci-fi fair of so many cool demos and, and like projects that people have been working on that they could, you could literally interact with and play with, um, including a BLE uh, lib P2P transport, which is awesome, and I can't wait to hopefully get to, to play with that more this weekend, and DHT visualizers, and NPM on IPFS, and a ton of other really cool stuff. Super, super awesome. So super awesome quarter, tons of growth, tons of exciting stuff, um, tons of getting the community together and pushing things forward, but also some challenges. Um, definitely one of the things was being able to deal with that growth and having good network and gateway stability and reliability throughout that. Um, and that was a challenge for us that um, definitely we, we noticed and started working on, um, but aligning ourselves to really commit to this going forward and, and make this kind of a, a core part of how we do our work is checking and, um, and being kind of like all hands on deck to make sure that uh, we have really good reliability and scalability there now that we're realizing that it's, um, you know, we don't get to choose the timing of when scalability happens, uh, it chooses its own time. And so that's definitely an area where we experience some challenges and, um, and have to dedicate more resources in the future to make sure we're, we're uh, addressing it. Another area that came up, um, and this was kind of a feedback loop through IPFS camp, but also before that, was that um, our documentation <clears throat> maybe wasn't doing a great job of directing people to the latest and greatest in uh, how IPFS works and how, how to get onboarded onto the, the project in terms of consuming it for um, a DAP or some other um, tool that, that you're trying to work on and build on top. And this definitely created frustration within, within our community and is something that we think we can do a whole ton better on, um, but has been kind of an area of underinvestment where things have gotten a little stale. And um, so that's an area that we also think we can um, really dedicate some more resources to. And it's super critical that we are um, kind of listening to all of the feedback we got from IPFS camp to um, refocus our energies and make IPFS even more easy to use as a developer. Um, and, and so that's definitely an area for increased dedication and focus. And finally, um, we did a lot of awesome research around package managers this past quarter. Um, we got to um, see people you know, coming into the package managers call with like um, mirrors that they were running on top of IPFS, but like generally, you know, we're working pretty well for them and, and having really awesome deduplication and other um, useful benefits. Um, but also we had a lot of pretty ambitious goals from an engineering perspective for the improvements we wanted to be making on the package manager's priority last quarter that didn't quite make it over the line. And um, really here, this is the connection between all of the research and, and like understanding of the package manager's goal and the, the actual accomplishment of like turning that into code integrated into the, the core protocol. And so that was definitely an area where, you know, we think, we think in order to, you know, we're halfway through the year, in order to really hit this goal out of the park, we need to be dedicating more engineering resources to making sure that that really happens um, and doing it in a more tightly coupled way so that the, the work we're doing on proof of concepts and research and understanding has to be tightly, um, like, you know, communicating and like aligned with the people who are actually you know, implementing those improvements and, and making sure that we have fast iteration on making sure we're heading in the right direction at every step. Cool, so that kind of boils down into this list of really important endeavors. Um, the scalability um, and reliability challenges uh, mostly focuses around the first two, um, which is making sure that IPFS as a product has great quality of service and making sure that we have tests that validate that we are set up to have that great quality of service at every point. Um, and that's kind of a level of production readiness and um, kind of reliability that we're investing in heavily right now um, to, to kind of address that feedback and the challenges that we faced in Q2. Um, we have, of course, a, a group who are focused on kind of project operations, continuing to make sure that we, um, you know, do, do the important work involved in running the project and also are communicative and community oriented about how we do that and we're um, kind of open and involved and doing all of the, the various pieces of that. Um, and then there are 
two other goals, one around package managers and making sure from an end perspective that we are aligning our research and our work and we're hitting this goal out of the park. Um, and then finally around developer UX and accurate and usable documentation and guides. And so those are the, the kind of needy areas of problems that we saw for this quarter. And we were looking at these areas and we were understanding that um, this is really where we needed to be focusing our time. We realized that trying to spread this across our existing um, working group structure wasn't going to be the most effective way to dedicate um, ourselves to these problems and actually really fix them efficiently. Um, we'd already felt a little like um, having, having requirements or, or problems spread across different groups um, made it really difficult for people to dedicate themselves to a problem, to, to really dive deep and understand it. Um, and it hurt from a prioritization perspective as well, like the context switching back and forth between things. And so um, that this was an area where we definitely um, realized that it, it affected not just what we needed to do, but how we needed to do it and how we needed to organize ourselves to, um, to make it really effective. Um, so we're, we have uh, reorganized ourselves a little bit from, a, from an org structure. Um, this is not new. We kind of do a little check-in on org structure and make a couple of changes um, about every quarter this year. So to look back in Q1, we had kind of this org structure. We had a ton of different working groups, I think about 10 or 11, um, and we were kind of split into to teams of like, you know, in, in some case, you know, just one or one and a half, which was a problem, um, but also, you know, teams of up to like five or so um, spread within these different working groups. And it kind of proliferated um, uh, kind of over time because we were excited about working groups and we were excited about problems we wanted to solve. But at the end of Q1 and beginning of Q2, we realized that um, this kind of multi-membership of people in many, many different working groups and split across maybe even three or four working groups made it really difficult to understand where they were spending their focus and to have kind of that team cohesion of, of solving uh, problems together. And so we took some of the, the working groups that were kind of more, um, you know, had, had less than two people dedicated to them or um, were, were kind of more problem area oriented and we turned them into special interest groups where um, you could still attend a monthly meeting or do, do work um, amongst a group of people who were also focused on that task, but that your core um, execution and the place where you did your planning and your teamwork um, all lived within a single working group. And so we kind of unified into this like core, core set of teams um, that were again, like kind of uh, functional oriented. So go IPFS, JSF, EFS, um, project or working group, those sorts of things. Um, but we, we condensed ourselves a little bit in order to uh, minimize our, our planning and overhead for these areas. And the condensing part we thought went well, but then when looking at these teams and thinking about these problems we needed to solve in Q3, we realized all of these problems were gonna be spread across all of the different working groups and um, add additional overhead. So uh, when looking at what we decided to do at the end of Q2, going into Q3, um, this was, um, actually orienting ourselves into kind of task force oriented groups where we're focused on a single problem. And so everyone still has membership in a, in a particular, one particular working group um, and not spread across many of them, um, but really dedicated to a particular problem area. And so this changed a little bit, which things were our SIGs and which things were our working groups um, so that people could be in a cross-functional team with JS people, Go people, project people, all focused on really hitting one of these problems out of the park. All right, so with that teeing ourselves off into what is our Q3 org structure, um, I wanna open up the floor to the, the area leads for each one of these kind of core groups to dive into exactly what they're taking on this quarter uh, from kind of an OKR and priority perspective, starting with Hector. Hi, um, I have a slide, I think. You do. This one. Um, we're still coming up with a name, IPFS as a service, gateways as a service, infrastructure as a service, we don't know yet. But the basic idea of this uh, task force is to bring gateways into shape in the way that we can um, run this infrastructure in a more serious production product fashion, um, having canary deployments, having nightly um, deployments, 
having service level agreement, service level objectives, and monitoring all of that in a consolidated way. Documenting all of this around gateways so that everyone um, can come in and get the knowledge um, rather fast. Um, be able to export metrics from the gateways that not only indicate um, how healthy the gateways themselves are and whether they're working, but that also provide um, health information about the general state of the IPFS network. Um, and part of creating um, this gateway as a product is to expose to the public that the gateways are not IPFS, they're not just IPFS running, that the gateways are a separate thing that we provided as a service to the community as protocol labs, that other people may choose to provide this service as well, and that's perfectly fine. That we as providers of that service expect that the usage of the gateways follows uh, certain guidelines. For example, you cannot use them um, to uh, offer content through the gateways that we do not agree with um, by policy. And at the end, to have this um, as a sustainable effort, meaning to have a team around this, to have team ways around this, and to have um, to have inertia on how we are handling all of this together so it is sustainable in the future and we can um, yeah, create ways to to have this um, moving forward in the future. I hope that is okay for this for a description. If anyone has questions, I probably only use two of my five minutes. So. Great, I see no questions. Moving on. Awesome, thank you very much, Hector. All right, moving on to testing infra, Raul. That's me. So, so yes, yeah, so basically we took a decision based on you know, our observations of uh, the, the performance numbers and a few other regressions that the latest releases uh, contained, uh, the, Go, the latest Go IPFS releases contained, to basically halt the release train until we can actually characterize releases and their impact on, first of all, in terms of performance, in terms of the local environment of the node, and also in terms of how it affects, how a particular release affects the network and the network behavior. So of course, these, this level of characterization is, you know, you can ask a lot of questions here. How much has the behavior, behavior of my node improved or deteriorated with this particular change uh, that I'm committing or this particular PR that introduces algorithmic changes, that introduces protocol changes and so on. Uh, how does the network behave, improve or deteriorate if we deploy this particular change set to the entire network? How would this particular change affect the current overall emergent behavior with the current composition of the network. So there are a lot of you know, different scenarios that we want to test, but we do recognize that we can't go from zero, from zero to 100 in just one quarter. Um, but all of these things are necessary to gain full confidence in the changes that we're making, to, uh, to test the reliability, the quality of service, the scalability characteristics, and so on of everything that we put out. This is going to require, as I said, a number of different types of tests, uh, amongst which we are prioritizing for uh, Q3, what we are calling live canary testing. So basically, a particular change set, a particular release, a particular commit, we're going to be deploying it to, uh, to the network. We're going to be running it against the live network and running a master test plan to, and capturing a lot of results and a lot of metrics uh, from each of those test cases. There's going to be a test coordination service. Uh, this, we're going to integrate all of this with the software engineering uh, tooling that we have in place. This is a key aspect. We want this tool to be integrated in day-to-day -day lives of IPFS engineers. Otherwise, it's going to stay in an island. Um, users, uh, engineers are going to be able to manually trigger jobs from, from GitHub. We're going to publish all results um, in a dashboard that will be accessible as well to the community, uh, such that you can uh, engineers will be able to compare. You know, how did this particular commit uh, affect the behavior relative to this other commit? Right. Um, we're going to have so 
at this point, we're going to build a, a basic set of initial test scenarios, and which is going to be expanded over over next quarters. We expressly taking a minimal viable approach to this. We know that the test lab and like the test bed and so on efforts have been going on or have been in conceptualization stages for for a long time. There have been several iterations, so we really want to like dumb it down this time and get to the essentials such that we can unblock you know the release rate that is the core objective right now um, another type of tests that we're going to be working on are what we call in private uh, private network tests and these are basically uh, running an ipfs release against a inside a private network that we control with different levels of simulation and different levels of control so on the first uh, on the first iteration we're going to be focusing on non-reproducible test uh, test scenarios. Uh, this is basically running a test scenario without full control of you know the topology, the network, and so on, and probably run it a few times so you can get different observations and, and form judgments based on that. Then we're going to be uh, evolving that towards reproducible test scenarios where we'll actually run uh, our code within text fixtures, uh, fixtures that will be able to provide a fixed environment for those tests to get more accurate and repeatable results over time. And then finally, what I'm calling hermit, hermetic test cases, uh, which is a bit of an esoteric term, but basically it means we control every single aspect of that test, including the network. So uh, we include the, we control the environment that that particular test is running on in terms of IO, in terms of CPU, in terms of network, latencies, jitter, packet loss, and well, everything that you can think about such that Time over time, every single iteration of those tests, we expect them to produce, if run against the same commit, like very little jitter in the results. If anything, very much fluctuations, but they should be completely repeatable time after time. And uh, I think I did consume my five minutes, but if you want to reach out to me uh, via Slack or elsewhere, I'm probably Awesome. Thank you so much, Raul. People can also um, throw them in for, for Q&A as well. There's other questions. All right, project operations. Dietrich, do you want to take take away? Hello. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. All right, we are coming in from, from DWeb Camp where there are various uh, projects being set up around us. It looks very cold. It's a little chilly. It's not freezing. Um, so project operations. Uh, this was the group that was basically tasked with keeping the, uh, the nuts and bolts of the operation running through the quarter, uh, serving the needs of the other task forces, and making sure that several high priority initiatives that we do want to keep pushing along bit by bit are not lost. Uh, there are a couple of, uh, well, there is a cast of characters involved. Each one of these different areas in the project operations group could be a task force of its own. Some of them are several working groups combined to some extent. Uh, so they, you will probably hear their voices in the future, but I'll do a, the best that I can do in summarizing what they're going to be doing this quarter. The uh, first is the IPFS implementations groups. Both JS and Go are shipping quality releases on a schedule. Uh, if you look into the details of the uh, key results for this quarter. There are some uh, interesting overlaps with the test group, and it's great to see all of these groups focusing on uh, quality and stability in their core work this quarter, uh, as well as a number of changes and improvements to the process of how the releases are constructed, formulated, and, and shipped. Uh, the, the second major segment is the IPFS community work. Uh, a lot of this work is really focused on improving our communications infrastructure and making sure that the community is well supported. Uh, the last couple of quarters, we had some things that um, we needed to communicate to the community, everything from um, network scale stuff to how we're responding to uh, uh, operations and, and gateway downtimes and things like that to also some of the changes that we made in in the project and prioritization. So the, some of the work here is around making sure that we have, uh, uh, and also things like IPFS camp, that um, we have so much to share, uh, all the things that came out of camp with the community. And that's really probably six months worth of stories that we could be, be telling. So having a, an organized and, and clear uh, schedule and infrastructure to support that communication in an ongoing way, keeping the community both informed and engaged and aware of uh, what we're 
focusing on. Um, the, oops. My uh, anti-hacked uh, hotspot got me again, locked my own screen. Um, the third area is the collaborations group. So Arkady and I spent some time last week uh, kind of sitting down and, and um, kind of designing how we can manage the really vast uh, and diverse sets of partners that we have and the relationships that we have with them. And also a system for understanding who our future partners might be, who is the total set of people that are using IPFS, implementing it in their projects, uh, it really ad adding IPFS to new whole industries that, that we've been seeing. How do we have an understanding of that whole landscape uh, where we need to spend our attention? where we need to build new relationships and where we need to support, and also a, a better set of uh, policies around where we don't need to put our energy. There's only a few people uh, you know, dedicating a large part of their time to collabs and a lot of people spending a little bit of time with collabs. And it's really easy to suck the time away from and focus away from some of the core team members. And we wanna be able to have a system that, that doesn't do that and allows them to focus on, on shipping our PFS core. Uh, and it, in addition, there are a couple of high priority collaborations like uh, uh, Brave and, and Opera that have uh, some work that needs to always be happening in order to make sure that those are moving forward. Uh, the fourth area is research. And this is something that, that David and Giannis are gonna be pushing forward both in, in, in uh, increasing our presence uh, in a few different places, uh, conferences and such, as well as uh, a cadenced publication of the research that we're doing. And the final area is to make sure that uh, projects like desktop and, and GUI, uh, even though they might not be the highest priority in this quarter and the next, are uh, that we do have dependencies on them, especially in some of the collaborations work, uh, making sure that uh, the rapid changes in the core implementations aren't breaking those, making sure that they are shipped as needed in order to serve the task force and also the community members that are still pushing those projects forward are, are supported and um, included in this work. Awesome, thank you so much, Dietrich. All right, on to package managers. Uh, Andrew and Michelle, uh, and let me know when, when to hit next slide. Go for it, Andrew, thank you. Hello, uh, up front, I apologize if my internet goes horribly wrong. Uh, Please let me know if anything doesn't come through and I'll repeat it. Uh, so I'll just start a timer. Um, the package managers team has kind of already been doing a lot of research for the past few months. And now we're kind of geared up to the point where we feel that we can really uh, tackle the package manager problem effectively. And we're gonna focus our efforts on file system based package managers from uh, for for this quarter, so that is uh, mostly Linux system package managers, but it uh, avoids a lot of the complications of other more. Oh, sorry, there's um, some of the more complicated setups of package managers. Our kind of guiding star for the whole quarter is going to be being like a a package manager maintainer or a user who wishes to mirror a uh, existing. Uh, file system based package manager should be able to import uh, an existing repository into IPFS from scratch in a reasonable amount of time, be able to update it every time that there are upstream changes, again, in a reasonable amount of time, and have a good time doing it. Uh, the, the experience from performance uh, and kind of the, the route for it, not being able to to kind of set those users up to fail is really key for this uh, because we want people to, to kind of be able to self-serve um, and be able to take the tooling that we have and run with it and start to kind of be able to bring in all the package managers into IPFS without necessarily needing us to be pushing that direct. Next slide. So I split this across uh, two sections. Can you the dog? Like, is the door? Uh, are the dogs audible? Or are they? No. Okay. So They're audible, but it's not a problem. Uh, 
they're very cute so it, it kind of balances out the uh the first thing that we're going to do is develop a number of ben like baseline benchmarks to give us visibility on the current state of ipfs and how that uh how it handles importing these very large directories of files looking at up to a million files in say the ubuntu repository uh which is significant uh, and also kind of unknown as to the different ways that this can be done and then from the end user's perspective as well once you have a mirror on ipfs how long does it take for them to install those did i get lost a little bit yes a little bit so uh, those benchmarks will give us the kind of uh, the path to then go down for the rest of the quarter and actually try and improve those things. And we already have a fairly good idea of uh, the process of setting up a, um, a package manager. They're documented uh, across every different um, kind of Linux distro already. And we're literally gonna be running those things and working out like where are the pain points in IPFS right now. Next slide. Once we have those benchmarks, we will then research ways of uh, improving those benchmarks. We're hoping for orders of magnitude of improvement uh, from potentially mounting IPFS as a file system to looking at the actual documentation and the user experience of uh, setting up a mirror. And this includes like the different flags, different experimental features, trying to get um, kind of a best practice for mirroring these kinds of uh, repositories onto IPFS, interviewing uh, and researching the processes that package uh, repository maintainers take at the moment to uh, to make sure that they're uh, we're fitting in with the way that they work rather than requiring them to change their processes to work with uh, IPFS and uh, being able to uh, kind of reliably improve the speed of adding data to IPFS is one of the key things we're gonna be hitting. Uh, and that's like the majority of the work. So it's, it's very laser focused on being able to successfully import these giant file systems into IPFS. Uh, and then we can move on to actually how we go about spreading that across the internet. And alongside that, we're actually kind of slightly experimenting with the way that uh, we work as a team, which we want to kind of increase the level of agency that the engineers uh, and team members that are working on uh, this team have around solving problems that our end users are experiencing and being able to, to ship those and kind of work through um, the, the problems for users. Uh, as well as being able to document the process that we hopefully find out works well and the things that we find don't work well and share those with other teams so that we can uh, hopefully share the kind of the process of uh, shipping package manager results for end users to the whole of the IPFS org. Awesome, thank you very much, Andrew. Eric for Docs and UX. Yes, let me start a timer here too. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, uh, one of the three big areas that Molly mentioned were surfaced in last quarter was indeed documentation, user experience. You know, IPFS is is hard to use, <laughs> and uh, we, we want to make it a little bit more accessible. And of course, docs is like a small word which contains the universe you know and so it's easy easy to get uh distracted and uh and try to boil the ocean but we really want to make sure that we're focused in this quarter and broadly that looks like um three steps of taking a look at the documentation now and uh the platform that we're using now and some other platforms that might be more uh easier to use, easy from, you know, offer more features as well as, as easier for us to implement. And, uh, and take a look at the user experience. 
in a uh, in a methodical way, and then use that knowledge to actually try to make some measurable improvements right now. So uh, more granularly, right now we're doing, uh, Portia has kicked off a content audit, which is sort of analogous to what was done, what she did for a cluster in the last quarter. So we had that as kind of a pattern to iterate on and, uh, and follow. And you know, it's, it's gonna surface problems. It's surface problems already. In fact, some, uh, I, I believe someone's already issued a, uh, or posted a PR for a fix for one of the things that was surfaced. So we are, you know, we're, we're building the plane while we're flying it. And, uh, and it's awesome, fantastic. Uh, so then we wanna, I already talked about the features um, that we want to look for in a, in a tool. Um, and maybe we end up where we are now, but uh, uh, we're thinking perhaps something more along the lines of a Gatsby and people are slacking some ideas like uh, is it DocuSource or something was thrown out yesterday in Slack. If people have ideas, please, please bring them on. Um, we're, we have a, a doc that we're, um, that we're putting together with the, that lays out the different features and advantages. A big one is uh, translation ability, the internationalization, and surprisingly, not a lot, not a lot of tools really have that as sort of a core uh, functionality. And we want something that we don't have to, you know, do a lot of customization, like you know, custom building for. So uh, I think uh, DocuSource maybe, maybe does have that. Uh, and then down to understanding our users and their needs. Um, where uh, we have some some super awesome UX talent on the team now. Uh, for example, Jessica, and we want to just be methodical about who our users are. Uh, and and one way uh, we can get some metrics surrounding that is to quickly create uh, kind of a question feature on the homepage of IPFS.io where people can, uh, they can pick from a list of, you know, what, what do I want to do? You know, what am I trying to accomplish? You know, I'm, I'm an app developer. How, how can IPFS make my life easier or something like that? Uh, and, and these would, this would kind of be kind of a double-edged sword. Hopefully it would, it would make the content. It would drive these people to uh, maybe a, a, specific area of the current documentation site that has, uh, that has some content that might be useful to them. Um, but at the same time, it also gives us some metrics, you know, um, if, if we get a lot of people saying, I'm a, I'm a researcher and I'm, and I'm trying to figure out this D-Web stuff, then maybe that'll, that'll help us prioritize um, the, you know, the um, personas that we, create. Uh, and then, yeah, flying the plane, building the plane while we're flying it. Uh, we want to see about getting a documentation specialist, whether that's a scope contributor or, or whatever, someone who is good at words. Uh, and, you know, that, that's the most important thing. And uh, that's going to take some work, as we know, to bring on anyone new always. It takes a little time. And we're not uh, seeing that as a blocker, though, to to improving our content right now, because uh, we have content right now that was created by a lot of us, and and we have we uh, understand a lot of us understand IPFS uh, better than anyone else in the world, and so uh, I'd be leaning on. I might be leaning, reaching out uh, to to folks to contribute, and. Uh, also to feel to feel your pain points, you know, I, uh, we want to, we really want to hear uh, what you have heard, you know, if you've, if you yourself have experienced uh, confusion through our documentation, or you are aware of, of issues that people have posted, or just conversations, maybe at IPFS camp, uh, someone was confused about something, uh, just Please uh, reach out uh, in our file an issue. And if, if you're uh, in earshot of this, if you're watching this later um, and you're part of the community, 
we so value that kind of input from directly from you and I've just posted into the chat where you can uh, where you can put an issue in github for us uh, so yeah we're gonna do some fixes and we're also proto school is a is a big part of, of education and making IPFS understandable so that is has been folded into this um, at a certain level to this project awesome thank you so much Eric cool awesome so that is the awesome set of work that people are are doing this coming quarter um, and very directed specifically toward um, the, the challenges and, and areas where um, we saw room for improvement um, and really targeted focus uh, this, this next quarter. So yeah, big round of applause for all of the, the folks who spent their hard time, hard work getting in there. Yeah, classic unmute and clap. We can do that. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, Andrew is also mentioning in the chat that he got a fix in for the docs already. I. I created a PR on the docs. So we, we're all, we can all chip in and help, help make that one um, a lot better. Um, it's not, not only the docs team is gonna write docs, we're all gonna write docs. Awesome, well, thank you all for participating in this and I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>